For a more involved example, we're going to use Gaussian elimination to solve the system x minus 4y plus 2z equals negative 2, x plus 2y minus 2z equals negative 3, and x minus y equals 4. Where for this, we can start by taking that system and converting it into an augmented matrix, like we do with Gaussian elimination, and then we're going to apply some row operations going through carefully, where first, because we have all ones to begin with, we've got plenty of options, so we'll just keep things as they are, more or less. We're going to subtract row one from row three and row two in succession to get down to two zeros in the first column, and then a six and a three below the second, a negative four and a negative two in the third, and then a negative one and a six in the, that's the word I'm looking for here, augmented section, the constants, as it were. And then from there, not because we have a great reason to, but just because I like having smaller numbers to chase around, I'm gonna flop row two and three. It really doesn't make a huge bit of difference here, especially if you pay attention, looking at rows two and three, you can see that the six and the three, there's a factor of two shared there. And the negative four and the negative two also have a factor of two shared there. And the negative one and the six, they don't, but we're not gonna worry as much about those. But what we are gonna see here is because of that pattern, when we try to reduce based on the second row to clear out the third, I'm not gonna knock out that three just yet, because it's easier to clear out the next row, we'll end up with following the operation, zero, 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 and a negative 13 in that last row. And that's why I didn't simplify, because there's no real need to, because in that last row, we end up with zero equals negative 13. Yet again, a strange and impossible statement to say the least, and as a result, because that's what we get, we would say that our original system, those values that we were trying to deal with before, is inconsistent. And the reason why we say it's inconsistent is because no matter what happens to x, y, and z in that first pair, those first two rows, nothing we do is gonna make zero equal to negative 13. There's no way we can satisfy that third equality. There's nothing we can do meaningfully to get past that error, so the system ends up being inconsistent. On the other hand, let's say that the system was set up in a nicer way where we could get something other than an obviously false statement from that third part. Let's say instead that our second equation was x minus 2y minus 2z equals 10 in our system. And if that's what we do, if we make that adjustment, and I'll leave it to you to verify how this works, where we would end up instead is with that third row, that row that we couldn't deal with before, now all being zeros. That third row would just go away because it's obviously true. No matter what happens in row one and row two, row three always occurs. It doesn't tell us anything because zero is always equal to zero. And that's one way that you can usually tell to look for, just to backfill a little bit. If something's going to have an issue, see while you're doing your reductions, if you ever end up with rows that look like multiples of each other. It wasn't obvious from the start, but after one step, really two steps, but they're essentially the same sort of thing, we ended up with a redundancy, which meant that you couldn't possibly do both unless one doesn't matter. But anyway, here we made an adjustment, and now that means that our third row, our third equation, doesn't tell us anything, so we can reduce our system down to just looking at those first two rows. We can look at 1, negative 4, 2, with negative 2 on the other side, 
along with 0, 1, negative 2 thirds, 2, where I took one more small row operation to throw in a constant multiple to simplify the second row. And from there, we can turn that into a new system of equations, which would say that our original, that mess that kind of worked, is now equivalent to x minus 4y plus 2x equals negative 2, along with y minus 2 thirds z is equal to 2. And from there, we can proceed with some fairly basic algebra, where if we let y be equal to 2 thirds z plus 2, let me actually put that z up. Oh boy, that didn't erase at all. <laughs> that z up a little bit higher and make this 2 a bit more 2-like. What we can then do from there is take that value and plug it back into the x equation. So we have negative 2 is equal to x minus 4 times 2 thirds z plus 2. plus 2z. And now, number x and a whole bunch of z's, we can push this around a little bit, and I'll let you guys see how you'd push that around if you check the notes or if you check this for yourself. But what you'd end up with is that x is equal to 6 plus 2 thirds z. Which means, if we think about our solution, We've got something in terms of y, something in terms of x, and z is kind of free. So what you'd end up with is that our solution set is a whole range of options that we can possibly have, so long as those options fit the right pattern, where x can be anything of form 6 plus 2 thirds z, y is anything of form, let me rearrange that just to be a bit consistent, 2 plus 2 thirds z, and z is in a sense free. We say that our solution depends on z as it were, although it's convention that we'll usually have in this class, the z value is what it depends on, but Really, that's a matter of simplicity with the algebra there and the process that we followed to get here. If we did a different sort of reduction, we could put this in terms of x just as easily. And from this point right here, we could also very easily put this in terms of y instead. The fact that it's z is not a special and unique thing. It's just a matter of convenience for the process that we followed. But the long and short of it is, in our original system, you had something that was definitely false, so it was inconsistent. And this one, we ran into a statement that's definitely true, so it has a whole bunch of solutions. But those are kind of our two sides of the coin for when things go wrong with these problems.